I'm Elizabeth. Today we're going to learn how to make a CDC cloth face covering or a mask, one that looks like this. Okay, let's get started. In your kit that the Catholic Charities has provided to you, you're going to have two pieces of fabric, two elastics, and some thread. You'll also be provided with CDC guidelines that you can read over before you start to make your mask. In addition to that, please find a safety pin, the bigger the better, a small little ruler, some pins, some straight edge pins that you can use when you sew, and a pair of scissors. So let's get started. For your fabric, to make it easier to sew the mask, what I've done is I've taken one piece of fabric and I've cut off a quarter of an eighth of an inch all the way around the fabric. Okay, so you can see the difference right there. The first thing that I'm gonna do is after I've cut off a quarter of an inch around the edges, I'm gonna take it to my ironing station. And I'm gonna fold over that quarter of an inch with my fingers. I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna to start to iron it down. So you just wanna make sure that your iron is set on cotton, as hot as possible, and that you've got some steam. But please be careful so you don't burn yourself, okay? So one side down. Now, I'm gonna take it and fold it over one more time so we don't have a raw edge when we sew. And I'm just gonna slowly move that over. If you feel more comfortable, you can always use the ruler and measure or you can just do what I did and just eyeball it. Okay, so we've got one side here that's completed. I'm gonna grab my pins, and as the fabric is cooling, I'm gonna take three pins and secure the fabric by placing the pin at the beginning, middle, and end of my seam. So we've got that. Now we're gonna repeat the same for the opposite side. So just to run through it quickly again, turn it over either using your finger or with a ruler to measure a quarter of an inch. Make sure you steam so it secures it and makes it nice and crisp. Fold it over one more time. As it's cooling, you're gonna grab a pin Make sure the fabric is not hot. Secure a pin in the middle, sorry, at the beginning, the middle, and the end. Okay. So we've got the top and the bottom of our fabric ready to sew. Now I'm gonna take my pins and I'm gonna go around, as well as my scissors, and I'm gonna go around to my sewing machine. Your sewing machine should be already threaded. You wanna make sure that your thread count is gonna be at least a three, no bigger than a 3.5. And you're using the thread that they provided to you already in your bobbin and sewing. So I'm gonna lower my lever and I'm gonna to start to sew. I'm gonna to start to sew and I'm gonna back stitch a few stitches and I'm slowly gonna go forward. And as I'm stitching, I can remove the pin. Now, for a beginning sewer, it may be easier for you just to stop with your needle in the fabric and pull out a pin and then continue to sew. And you certainly don't have to sew as quickly as I'm sewing here. I've been sewing for a long time. For anybody that's a beginner, sew whatever speed works for you. And then I'm gonna go here to the end and I'm gonna back stitch, reverse, and go forward so that way it secures the fabric here. I'm gonna lift up, grab my scissors, pull, and I'm also gonna clip the very beginning portion, those threads, and move them off to the side. So one side is completed. Now I'm gonna make sure that my thread is underneath my foot here as I continue to stitch forward again. So we'll put the th thread in the needle into the fabric. We'll start sewing, whoops, we'll start sewing. We'll go backwards and this time you can practice with me if you'd like 
you can just stitch right to the edge of the fabric. And if your fabric starts to pull out, that's okay. You can just by hand put it back in just like I'm doing right here. Okay. So we're gonna go all the way to the end, reverse, and then go forward. Okay, lift up your lever, pull, clip. Make sure that you also clip at the very beginning. That's an easy one to forget. Leave your scissors, take your threads, and now we've got the top and the bottom of our mask completed. Now we're gonna go back to the ironing station. Grab my pins again. And now we're gonna work on the sides. So to complete the sides, we're gonna do pretty much the same technique. We're gonna fold over a quarter of an inch and iron. I'm gonna steam that so again, it's nice and crisp. And then I'm gonna fold over approximately half an inch to three quarters of an inch. You can measure that out or you can eyeball it like what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to iron that down and steam. So one side is completed. And this is the casing that we've just created to put the elastic through. And I'm gonna put two pins here to secure that. So you can kind of see this is where we're gonna weave the elastic through, okay? We're gonna repeat the same for the other side. We're gonna fold over a quarter of an inch, steam it down. And then we're gonna fold over again, half an inch to three quarters. Just make sure they're the same distance. And if they're not, you can always go back and adjust one. You also wanna make sure that they're uniform and even. And steam down. And place one pin by the end, edge of the fabric. Place another pin by the other edge and now we're ready to sew the sides. Our mask is almost complete. So let's grab our pins, go to the sewing machine, and we're gonna stitch down. And I like to put my pins here in the center. You can put your uh, pin holder there, you can put them onto the side, whatever most convenient for you. So same thing, we're gonna line up the fabric, we're going to go forward a little bit, back stitch, and I'm just gonna follow along, right along the edge of that fabric. I'm gonna reverse to make it nice and secure. Lift up, clip using my scissors. Again, I'm gonna clip the front side, keep my spare threads over there. I'm gonna go again, second side. faster this time, but again, take it whatever pace that you'd like. Reverse, lift up, clip, and clip. Okay, so now we basically completed the mask. We now have to insert the elastic. So I'm gonna go back to my little workstation, and this is where I need my safety pin. I'm gonna grab the safety pin, and this is where the bigger the better. One of the smaller pins may be a little bit more challenging but it still will work. We're gonna put the safety pin on the edge of the fabric. And then I'm going to weave it through the casing. So you can see here, so as I'm going along, I'm pushing the, the pin through and I'm gathering my fabric and then I'm, I'm pulling. So that allows me to put, the to put the elastic through the fabric, okay? Just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna remove the pin and I wanna make sure that the elastic is flat, that it doesn't either bunch up or doesn't get crooked because you'll feel it. And then I'm gonna take a small little pin and secure that elastic like that. Then I'm gonna do the same for the opposite side. I'm gonna take the pin, close it, put it through my casing, pull a little bit if I need to, move the pin forward, Take the pin off and secure my elastic with a pin. That can be a little bit easy, hard to do. I'm gonna sew it on the machine, but if you have good hand sewing skills, you're more than welcome to take just a, a hand needle and thread and stitch that tight. Just make sure it's nice and secure so it doesn't become unraveled. But now we're gonna stitch these on the machine. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna close my pin here so I don't hurt myself. Okay, I'll go back to the machine, stitch the elastic. I've got my pins over here, so they're starting to collect, so I'm gonna take them off. So they don't get in my way. And now, this is a little bit tricky, but I know you can do it. You're gonna put the elastic underneath here and you're gonna stitch right above on top of it. So I'm gonna go forward and you can see the contrast with the white thread. I'm gonna go backwards, whoops, and then the pin can fly off like that. Oh, the pin head flew off. So let me try to, oh, the pin fell off, but we're still able to secure that elastic. So you can kind of see right here, I'm gonna move my threads over. You can see here how, I'm just cutting off my elastic. This is gonna go inside the casing. So it doesn't have to look perfect or beautiful, but it does have to be functional. Okay? So you can kind of see here how it's stitched, it's nice and strong. I'm gonna do the same for the opposite side. So we're just gonna repeat. And I'm gonna look for that needle to make sure that it doesn't that pin, sorry, that bent. I'm just gonna move that off to the side and um, so that doesn't happen very often, but no worries, we can work through that. Same. All right, so now I'm gonna make sure that I move my elastic so that stitch seam is in the center of the fabric so it's hidden. So that's why we weren't concerned about how nice or not nice it looked, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin down one side, because what we wanna make sure now is that we gather here at the side. We gather this elastic here. Whoops, let me just go back and pin this. Make sure that's nice and secure. Now it's caught the elastic. And I'm gonna go back and gather my fabric so it creates a look of the mask. You can kind of see how that looks right there. Okay? Now I can make it tighter. We probably don't want to make it a little bit any looser. I'm just going to secure that, change that around a little bit more. This is a big long pin, so it makes a little bit of a difference. But you can see that's how we're going to sew. We're going to do the height as you want. You just want to make sure that they're uniform. So that looks a little bit more uniform. I'm going to pull this down. You can measure it if you want, or you can eyeball it. So now all that we're going to do is stitch along the stitch line that we already have created from the very first time that we created the top of the mask. Maybe a little bit of a challenge to get your fabric and um, underneath here. Just be careful that you have your elastic nice and loose and in front because if you have it behind, it will get caught inside and you won't be able to, you'll stitch it down and we don't want that. So we're just gonna go forward a little bit. Put my fab, move forward, move backwards. This needs to be nice and secure. So we're gonna go back a few times, back and forward. And the reason for that is that that's where people are gonna put tension on when they pull their mask. So we cut the, the, uh, the threads. Again, I'm gonna cut the beginning of the threads as well. You're gonna have a total of four threads here. So I cut two earlier, I'm gonna cut some more. I'm gonna stitch both sides again, just making sure that I follow along the stitch line that I created earlier as best as I possibly can. Keep going forward, whoops, keep going backwards. I kind of overstitched there a little bit, pressed the wrong button, but that's okay, that's not a problem. Go forwards and backwards, lift up, take out my pin I'm gonna cut these threads okay. We're good we'll make sure that we don't see any of those threads coming off and now you can see how one side is nice and secure I see another little thread right there I'm just gonna pull through cut that off Quality control is very important in sewing. We wanna make sure that our mask looks as best as possible. Uh, and now we will finish the other side and we are almost done. 
I'm going to go back and forth again. Back and forth. Making sure that we catch that elastic underneath. Lift up. Clip off all of your threads. So we are almost done. Whoops, one more thread that we need to cut. And we are almost done. Okay. I'm just going to change my pin around. Doesn't get caught. Okay, here we go again. We're going to go forward. And we're going to take it nice and easy. Okay, and then we're going to go backwards. Sometimes I remove the pin as I'm sewing if it gets in the way of my stitching. So I can do that. And do the same thing. Cut off all of my threads. And ta-da, we have our new face mask. Best of luck. Make your mask as um, loose or tight as you want. You just wanna make sure that they're uniform. So that looks a little bit more uniform. I'm gonna pull this down. You can measure it if you want, but you can eyeball it, okay? So now all that we're gonna do is stitch along the stitch line that we already have created from the very first time that we created the top of the mask. Maybe a little bit of a challenge to get your fabric and um, underneath here. Just be careful that you have your elastic nice and loose and in front because if you have it behind, it will get caught inside and you won't be able to, you'll stitch it down and we don't want that. So we're just gonna go forward a little bit. Put my fab move forward, move backwards. This needs to be nice and secure. So we're gonna go back a few times, back and forward. And the reason for that is that that's where people are gonna put tension on when they pull their mask. So we cut the, the, uh, the threads. Again, I'm gonna cut the beginning of the threads as well. You're gonna have a total of four threads here. So I cut two earlier. I'm gonna cut some more. I'm gonna stitch both sides again, just making sure that I follow along the stitch line that I created earlier as best as I possibly can. Keep going forward. Whoops, keep going backwards. I kind of overstitched there a little bit, pressed the wrong button, but that's okay, that's not a problem. Go forwards and backwards. Lift up. Pull, take out my pin. these threads. Okay, we're good. We'll make sure that we don't see any of those threads coming off. And now you can see how one side is nice and secure. I see another little thread right there. I'm just going to pull through, cut that off. Quality control is very important in sewing. We want to make sure that our masks look as best as possible. Uh, and now we will finish the other side and we are almost done. I'm going to go back and forth again. Back and forth. Making sure that we catch that elastic underneath. Lift up. And ta-da! We have our new face mask. Best of luck.